Well, hello, friends. It is so great to be with you. My name is Chris, and this is the Meeting House live streaming. Whether you're watching this live on, on Sunday morning or whether you're watching this on a random Thursday while you're on the treadmill or listening to this while you're doing groceries, which is, you know, a, God bless you for multitasking. However it is that you are spending time with us, it is so great. You could be anywhere in the world but you're choosing to be here with us and we appreciate that. It's so great to be able to hang out with you. And hopefully this has been a great week for you. Um, I know, you know, some people, they feel like Sunday is the beginning of the week or for them, they feel like Sunday is the end of the week. However it is, whether you're coming to the end or starting your week, hopefully this has been a great week for you. I know for our family, something that we often do is we will ask each other, what was your win for the week? And what's something that you're looking forward to for the next coming week? And maybe that's something that we can do. Maybe we can do that in our chat right now. Maybe if you know, you're watching this on YouTube or you are part of our Discord community and you're, you're communicating with us there, maybe let's take a moment and say hello to one another and talk about a little bit about what our wins were for the week and what's something that we're looking forward to for this week. So you guys do that, friends, and I'll just sit here and, and not read what you're talking about, okay? I read a couple of them, it's fine. Um, Something that we are we are currently in as a as a community is we're in our teaching series. We're just finishing off our sacrificial savior series, and next week we are going to be starting our local teaching series titled "The Good News." And every so often, every few months or so, um, we kind of go off the beaten path of our regular teaching rhythms, and we do what we will consider local teaching. And so, in our in-person communities, our local pastors, they might take a couple Sundays to teach to their community, or they might invite somebody in from our community to, from their own community to teach that way. And for our online community, it's no different. And so you're going to be hearing from a few different pastors that you might not necessarily or regularly see on a, on a, on a given weekend, who are going to be talking to us about the good news, this gift that we have. Uh, that has been given to us through the, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus that we get to then share with other people. And so I, I'm, I'm excited for that. I, I love hearing from my peers and being encouraged in my faith <clears throat> out of what they have have learned and what they have they have been given out of their study and out of their work. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that starts next week. And then speaking of starting next week, guess what starts next week? Peacemakers. But we are so excited about this. But that... 
can, 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 can. We're talking about it now. That's how excited we are. It is so big, it is so cool, that we can't even wait until its regular start of, of May. We need to talk about it now. It's going to be a lot of fun. The idea that we get to bring peace wherever we are, that out of the life of Jesus, at work inside of us, we get to then bring peace wherever we are. And that's in ourselves, in our families, in our friendships, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our neighborhood, in our churches, in our communities. It's, it's such an exciting thing that we get to be a part of. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about ways you can get involved with Peacemakers at the end of this live stream, and then over the next couple of weeks, you're going to be hearing more updates in terms of what practical ways you can get involved. But for now, it's a couple of couple of programming notes that you should know. The first one is that there are no Peace Cards or kits this year. Uh, instead, we're going to be focusing on hosting events within our communities, online as well, um, to raise money that will go directly to MCC. So they then have the flexibility to use those funds wherever needed so that peace can be made and peace can be built. Uh, in, a, in a really cool way. And so, again, Peacemakers is coming starting in May, but you can get ahead on what that looks like right now, and that's a really cool thing. And speaking of getting ahead, speaking of looking forward to the future, um, we are, as a church, we are trying to figure that out, and it is no stranger to the journey that we've been on over the last couple of years to kind of figure out and find our, our, our footing. And so our senior leadership team, they have um, created um, a couple of videos for us to be able to learn together. And this this just, this literally just came in, just just came in uh, uh, off the wire. Um, these videos are going to be covering uh, following things. They're going to be covering policy updates. They're going to be um, covering leadership updates and the status of our overseer board. Uh, they're going to be um, providing uh, important financial updates and also next steps of way forward for for us as a church. And these are going to be some um, four, three or four minute videos that are going to be made available to you on our website at meetinghouse.com where you're going to be able to then watch at your own leisure. Maybe it's watching in an online group or watching on your own. And then if you have questions, you can email us and we will be able to kind of walk through this together. And that's the beauty of this journey. It hasn't been an easy journey for any of us. But the fact that we can walk in this journey together is really, really, really good. And we can link arms together and look to our, our, our left, to our right, and know that we are, are, are not alone in this journey. And so once those videos are made available, you can keep on looking at TheMeetingHouse.com until they're there and then watch through them. And let's be prayerfully excited about whatever is to, to come. In the midst of that, there's still the the journey of today and how we can be involved and how we can care for one another and how we can move the story of the meeting house forward. And we do that by being here and, and, and learning and growing together. We do that through serving. We do that through being in community, through home church and huddles. And we also do that through our, our giving. And as we give, we know that that's a part of our, our ongoing worship worship relationship with, with Jesus. We also know that as we give, we do that sacrificially uh, in order to see that things like peacemakers can take place, not just uh, in, in our country here, but around the world. We do that so that programs can take place for our, our children and for our youth and for our adults. We do that so that we can move the mission of Jesus forward. And so you can go to meetinghouse.com slash give and you can give that way. And we're so thankful for your willingness to partner with us as we partner with Jesus uh, to be makers of peace where, wherever we are. And so let's continue in that, that attitude as we go into a time of song and a time of worship. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Um, we're so glad that you could make it. We could all be together in church this Sunday. Uh, any excited and exuberant Leafs fans in the room? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, we have lots of reasons to celebrate this morning. Uh, I just want to read from Psalm uh, 28, verse 6 and 7. Just sort of a little reminder, because um, I think sometimes we get into the, the rhythm of coming to church and singing and Maybe we forget sort of why we, why we do it or what we can think about while we're worshiping. And the uh, psalm just says, Praise the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is the, my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. 
He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So we just welcome, or welcome you and um, invite you to stand with us and sing with us for the next little while.
Many of us try to shove spiritual transformation into the nooks and crannies of a life that is already unmanageable, rather than being willing to arrange our life for what our heart most wants. We think that somehow we will fall into transformation by accident. Ruth Haley Barton, Sacred Rhythms. We need to ask ourselves why we are so busy. Sabbath helps us to question our assumptions. The truth is that we may be busy because we feel a need to validate our worth. Sabbath gives us a chance to step off the hamster wheel and listen to the voice that tells us we are beloved by God. Ken Shigematsu, God in my everything. Do not be discouraged by the resistance you will encounter from your human nature. You must go against your human inclinations. Often, in the beginning, you will think that you are wasting time, but you must go on. Be determined and persevere in it until death, despite all the difficulties. Brother Lawrence, the practice of the presence of God. What matters most is not if our love makes other people change, but that in loving, we change. What matters is that in the sacrificing to love someone, we become more like someone. Regardless of anything or anyone else changing, the success of loving is in how we change because we kept on loving. Anne Voskamp, The Broken Way. Love is a one-way street. It always moves away from self in the direction of the other. Love is the ultimate gift of ourselves to others. When we stop giving, we stop loving. When we stop loving, we stop growing. And unless we grow, we will never attain personal fulfillment. We will never open out to receive the life of God. It is through love we encounter God. Mother Teresa, where there is love, there is God. If you want to experience the life of Jesus, you have to adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. John Mark Comer, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Jesus, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Jesus, John chapter 13, verses 12 to 15. When I was in grade nine, I accidentally ended up taking drama. <laughs> and it was sort of by default this happened because I needed to have an arts credit and both visual arts and music just weren't options for different reasons. And so I ended up in drama. And I am a introverted person. I was at a new school where I didn't really know anybody except my sister. And all of a sudden I'm in drama class and we're doing things like improv, and it just, it was terrible, <laughs> it was terrible. And I would arrive for this class every week just full of anxiety, full of dread for what it was going to include, not looking forward to it. But as it went on in this class, my teacher in drama had us do this particular exercise that she called uh, relaxation time. So what this entailed was we would arrive at class, and when it was a day where we were going to have relaxation time, we all needed to find a spot to lay down on our backs on the carpet in the room. 
um, and then like listen to her while she guided us through this relaxation exercise. So the first time that this <laughs> happened, I've already arrived at drama, not really pleased about being there, and then she's like, everyone, now lay down on the ground as I dim the lights. And I was like, what is happening? Like, this is a terrible idea. But we lay down on the ground, and then she dimmed the lights, and she starts talking to us about what it means to relax our bodies. And she walked us through this exercise where kind of one like section of our body at a time, we would tense, 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 tense. So like starting with your feet, tense, 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 and then intentionally release. And then she would do this through like each different kind of section of our bodies. So the whole first time that this is happening, I'm thinking, this is not okay. I feel incredibly uncomfortable. Why are we doing this? This doesn't make any sense. Uh, not relaxed, definitely not relaxed in the whole first exercise. But as we kept going through the year, we did this in a regular rhythm. I don't know how often, but for sure once every week or two weeks, we would lay down on the ground <laughs> during our drama period and walk through this same relaxation exercise. And as it went over the course of the year, it shifted. My experience of it shifted. And it started to be that I looked forward to this relaxation exercise. It started to be that I could feel the tangible difference in my body as I went through the rest of the day after I had had this experience. And then I started to really um, like long for it, look forward to it, like appreciate it, need it as a practice as I went through the year. And in grade 10, I voluntarily signed up for drama. Uh, because I wanted to keep doing <laughs> the relaxation exercises as part of my rhythm. So we're going to talk today about rhythms of sacrificial living. Um, and as we get into that, I wonder if you will humor me for a minute. I won't make you lie on the ground um, in the dark, but I wonder if, just for a minute, for a few seconds, if you can tense your whole body wherever you're sitting. So if you're here in Oakville, or you're watching at one of our sites, or you're at home watching on the live stream, wherever you are, for a minute, tense your whole body, just tense every muscle you can think of, tense, 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 and hold it, hold it, hold it, and then release. And let your body feel the difference between one way of being and a different way of being. In this series about our sacrificial savior, we have been coming on quite a journey, all the way back from Leviticus, which brought us through to Easter, where we gave our attention to the cross as our focal point, as our everything, as the center of all of the reasons why we do what we do. Last week, Jimmy was talking to us about the table and how this is a place that Jesus invites us to be in a new way, to be together in a way that is different, that causes us to become an unstoppable force of good. And today, as we wrap up our Sacrificial Savior series, we want to talk about the basin. And we're going to get later into John 13, where we talk about Jesus washing his disciples' feet. We want to look at what it means for us, as the people of Jesus, to enter into rhythms of sacrificial living, to follow what he modeled for us, to listen to what he invites us to. And so we're going to start by grounding ourselves in a couple of verses from Romans chapter 12, where Paul is talking about what it means to live sacrificially, to be living sacrifices. So let's read these verses together. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says this. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be living and holy sacrifices, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So we want to notice for a minute some of the language that Paul is using in these verses to draw our attention to what it means to be living sacrifices. We t we've learned quite a bit, talked quite a bit about the old sacrificial system that is no more. And instead, Jesus invites us 
to offer our lives and the way that we engage with our lives as our sacrifice, as the way that we align ourselves with his invitation for us and his way of being. And so, but you see in the language some of what it means to live in a sacrificial way in the words that Paul chooses. Paul's talking about how the old way isn't going to be the way anymore that we're not gonna copy the behaviors and customs of the way that we knew before or the way that people who aren't following Jesus are living. This is going to be new, it's going to be different, it's going to be more fully what God intends us, what God intends for us, and that we can't do both. We can't live in the old way and in the new way. And if you think about how your body feels, the difference, you can't be tense and you can't be relaxed. You have to know the difference between the old way and the new way that we're entering into. Also, when we're talking about this invitation into the sacrificial life, it's not something to be taken lightly. And we'll kind of see that as we go through the rhythms and the practices and the way that Jesus talks to us about it. It's not um, a suggestion. <laughs> It's not just like, a, oh, that's a nice idea. This is the way that Jesus modeled for us. It's the way that he has shown us to be. And he says that if we're going to be his people, if we're going to walk in his way, then this is the direction that we need to go. But we also want to remember at the same time, even as we hear the weight of the invitation and the urgency around it, I noticed when I was reading these verses this time how Paul is pleading he says, I plead with you. There's significance here. There's importance here. There's urgency. But at the same time that we hold that, the weight of this invitation towards the sacrificial way, we also want to hold and remember and balance who it is that's asking us. So it's Jesus that is giving us this invitation. And so when he's saying, this is the way that I have for you, come and walk in it, it is an invitation of love, and gentleness, it is an invitation that means that he is gonna be walking with us in that way every step. And so we wanna, <clears throat> excuse me, hold both of those things at the same time, that it really matters, and also that God is with us. And as we talk about it today in terms of this rhythm and a practice, that it is a practice. I love the term spiritual practices because it means that we're still practicing <laughs> and we don't know how to do it yet. We're still learning, we're still in process. It's not, we're not spiritually experts, but we are practicing. And so with that gentleness, with that significance, it's also something that we wanna continue, continually be practicing, continually be walking in. I love in um, John Mark Comer's book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, he talks about an example um, that has really stuck with me over many years, where he's telling a story about how he's drinking his coffee in the morning, um, like in his pajamas, he's drinking his coffee, and he's watching um, different people kind of go for their morning run through the park by his house. And so he's seeing these people out of his window going for their run, he's drinking his coffee, and he's thinking, oh, like, that's so lovely going for a run. It's so lovely. Like, what a nice life it is to be a runner. I, like, I, I aspire to that, I admire that, it seems like a really good thing. But then upon further self-reflection, as he realizes like, where he's sitting, still in his pajamas with his coffee, um, that he kind of admires the life of a runner from a distance, but he was not in a place where he was ready to say yes to the lifestyle of a runner. So he starts imagining and thinking about the way that he spent his evening the night before, staying up really late, eating all kinds of snacks, watching TV, um, and then how he's spending his morning, you know, restful, casual, enjoying his coffee, taking his time. Well, the person who is outside doing the run has adopted a really different rhythm of life, probably, he's assuming in the story, about how they spent their evening as well as how they spent their, spent their morning. And so he starts to make this connection between sometimes we want to say yes to the life of a runner, but maybe we don't want to say yes to the lifestyle of the runner. And he draws the connection for us as people of Jesus that sometimes we want to say yes to the way of Jesus, to the life of Jesus. I wanna live a life of love. I wanna live in a way that reflects the heart of who Jesus is. But maybe we have a harder time saying yes to the lifestyle that Jesus modeled for us, to the way of being in the world that looks like Jesus. 
And I think it's good questions to ask ourselves where we find, not with weight, not with guilt, not with pressure, what, but with invitation, where Jesus is saying, I want you to have this life that I have intended you for as my people who I love, and I'm gonna show you the way to get there. Look at me, watch me, I'll show you how to do it, and it is going to be good. So we wanna spend a bit of time talking about two practices. Of course, living into rhythms of sacrificial living, living into the way of Jesus is kind of what we spend all of our time talking about, hopefully. So there's no way that we'll capture all the pieces of it in one morning. But we wanna kind of focus in on two rhythms, on two practices that Jesus invites us to that will reflect the sacrificial way. And the first one that we wanna talk about is the rhythm of rest for our souls and particularly the rhythm of Sabbath. So when Jesus is laying out what it looks like to walk in his way, what it looks like to live um, into what he has for us, one of the things that comes up through the whole narrative of scripture is the significance of rest, the significance of stopping, the significance of ceasing to have effort and work as our focus, and instead to just be as the people of God, to rest with him, to delight in his presence, and to learn so many things in that space that is different than what we know. Sabbath reorients us to the truest version of who we are actually made to be, and that we are not defined by what we do, or what we achieve, or by any role or title that we have in our life, but that even when we are doing nothing, even when we are simply resting and being, that our full identity is that we are beloved children of God. That all of our worth, that all of our identity, that all of our purpose, everything is fully there when we're just being and we don't have to be doing. But it's very hard for us as humans to remember that. It's very hard for us to live into the reality of that. And God knows that about us, about how he has made us. And so he builds into his way for us this practice of Sabbath, where we intentionally stop doing and can just be. That we can be with God, that we can be with people that we love, that we can be and delight in our lives. Jesus calls us to this directly in Matthew chapter 11. And these are maybe some really familiar verses to us, but for me, even though I've heard them a lot of times, every time I hear them, it's something that I need to hear again. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says this, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. Jesus invites us into Sabbath as a form of resistance against the old way of being, against the previous way that we have lived before we've moved into the lifestyle of Jesus, as a resistance against that to say, we don't need to work and work and work um, because we're worried that we won't have enough. Jesus says, I am enough and I will provide and you can trust me and you can just be, you can rest and just be and reorient yourselves to the way that I have called you to. But we resist, <laughs> we resist. Maybe even right now, as we talk about this maybe familiar idea, you can feel your own tension rising. You can feel your own body tightening. You can feel yourself saying, how is this a thing that we could possibly actually do? It doesn't make sense in the rhythms of our life. There's, this is a nice idea of a life, but how does it fit with the lifestyle that we actually live? And I am with you, I am with you. It is a very hard thing. It's not an easy thing because it requires adjustments to the way that we live in order to say yes to this way of Jesus. But friends, we wanna remember who is asking us to do this and we wanna remember why. 
Jesus is asking us to enter into this rhythm of living because he knows us and because he loves us. And he has shown us that saying yes to the sacrificial sacrificial way of living is the way that is good. It is the way that leads to life. He did it, and we can do it with his help. So I wonder if we can take a minute to, in our bodies, feel the difference. We can't practice Sabbath together on a Sunday morning, but we can take a minute to pause Um, and kind of orient ourselves towards what that looks like. So I'd invite you to just put a hand on your chest as a reminder that you are here and you can just be. And if you're comfortable, you can just close your eyes and take a couple of deep, slow breaths. Become aware of how God's presence is with us and listen to the invitation to a rhythm of Sabbath, to a rhythm of rest for your soul, that the Spirit wants to speak to you. As you breathe and as you feel your hand on your chest, reminding you that you are loved, that you can just be, can you open up your mind and your spirit to the question, of what would a rhythm of rest look like in your life, in your week? How could you create space and room to really be still in the presence of God? And can you picture in your mind a place where you are at rest? Maybe it's a real place that you know where you just breathe deeper, where your muscles just relax a little bit more easily, where you just feel at ease to be yourself. Picture this place, if it's real or imaginary, this place of rest, this place of receiving, and how God wants to meet you in that place. Ask God to show you what a next step in saying yes to the rhythm of rest would look like for you right now in this season. Amen. Take a breath and we'll come back to each other. The second practice that we want to talk about this morning is connected to the first. And so if the first practice is about resting, about being, about receiving from God, the second practice, the second rhythm that we want to look to is about moving to the other. It is about being given. It is about serving. And that this is another huge piece of what Jesus invites us to as we walk in his way. Jesus models for us over and over again what it is to be given, to be given to the point of death. But even before that, Jesus is giving his life to the people that he loves over and over and over again. And as people of Jesus, he invites us to do that as well. A few weeks ago when Quincy was starting into the Sacrificial Savior series, he was talking about the difference between the way of empire and how the way of empire is one of centralized power. And I think about it as whoever is at the center is in, part of the core, part of the center, part of empire, and anybody outside of that is out, excluded and othered in all kinds of ways. And the way of Jesus says we move away from the center to the other. And the reason that we do that is simply because that is exactly what has been done for us. 
We were the other, and Jesus came to where we are to show us his love and do everything that was needed for us to be fully welcomed and included. And so as God's children, as God's people, the way of Jesus is to move out to anyone that is at a distance from us, to anyone that is othered, othered by us maybe personally, but othered by our culture, othered by history, othered by our church, othered by broken ways that are not the way of Jesus, and that the invitation for us as God's people is to find those who are othered and move to them, full of love, ready to serve, ready to follow the example of Jesus. So we're gonna look together at John 13 now. I told you we were gonna move to the basin, and we wanna spend a few minutes um, reading through these verses when Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Because this is a beautiful place where Jesus is showing his disciples and then showing us what it looks like to become a servant, what it looks like to move to the other in a way that is giving up any kind of central authority or power as part of it. So in John chapter 13, we're going to start reading at verse 3. It says, Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around himself. And we'll just skip down then to verse 12 after he has a little conversation with Peter in the middle. Verse 12, after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. So Jesus does a beautiful, full teaching picture here of what it means to enter into the role of being given and actually models that for the disciples by doing it himself. He starts by saying he knows that he has all of the authority, literally all of the authority in the world. Everything is central to Jesus. And he gives this example of how he is going to step back from what that could entitle him to and instead take on the role of a servant, someone who would have been othered in their culture at this time, not seen, not recognized. He's gonna take on that role, he's gonna put on that clothing, he's gonna take on that posture, and then he's gonna enter into this physical act of meeting a bodily need that they have to serve them, to serve them. And then he's gonna say to them, this is how I'm showing my love and care for you, and this is how you can show my love and care to the world. I'm doing this for you. Now you follow my example and do this for others. When we serve others, it undoes a self-focused living that we can be prone to. If we're not practicing the opposite, the default will be that we worry more about ourselves. But Jesus says, the way that I have for you is to see the needs of others and move to them. And that as you live in this way, in this sacrificial way, that you can trust that I will provide what you need and I will also give you what you need in order to serve others and love them well. It undoes any kind of us and them distance between ourselves and other people and moves us towards the love that Jesus so longs for us to both experience and share. Sometimes when we give, we can have good intention, but we can still do it from a distance. Sometimes we wanna stay over here and just give (laughs) to the other from far away. And I think Jesus' invitation, the lifestyle and way of Jesus is that we need to be moved that there is a sacrifice involved. There's discomfort. And maybe we're really not sure if it's gonna be okay when we start into it. Maybe we can feel uh, our anxiety rising again about, oh, some of these things that sound nice, but 
I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to enter into that space, and I can feel it in my body that there is tension rising as I do not like what is being asked of me. And again, we want to remember who it is that's asking and why he's asking and how he will be with us as we move into these places where we feel the invitation of his way. We like the idea of the life of Jesus, but maybe we're not always sure about saying yes to the lifestyle. But thank goodness Jesus is right there with us as he asks, alongside us, showing us how, giving us the example, inviting us to say yes to him again. So we want to pause for a minute to feel it in our bodies again, the difference. Maybe we feel the tension of this sort of ask, this sort of practice of being given, and we're not sure. Or maybe we are longing for this, but we actually just don't know how to go about doing it. We get overwhelmed in our head as we're trying to think about what this could actually look like in the lived out rhythms of our lives. And so we want to pause just for another minute again. So I invite you again to just close your eyes if you feel comfortable. I invite you to open your hands up on your lap or in the air as a physical representation of being given, of being ready to offer what we have to serve others. And take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Turn our attention to how God is with us as we are talking about these things as we are listening to the invitations that he has on our lives. And ask the question of what would a rhythm of moving towards the other look like in your week? How could you create space to be actively serving those who are around you? And can you picture someone in your mind who is the other in your life right now? Maybe it's someone specific that you know. Or maybe it's a group of people that you would kind of rather keep at a distance. And whoever's coming to mind, I wonder if you can ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you about what it would look like to say yes to practicing moving towards that person or that group. Trusting that he will never leave you alone in that for a minute. Friends, I would encourage you as we go about our week then to just come back to maybe to these bodily rhythms to remind ourselves, come back to the questions, come back to the space and and give more room to pay attention to what the Spirit wants to say to you personally, to the invitations that are in front of us as individuals but also as a group, to live into these rhythms of rest for our souls and the serving of the other in our lives. We want to look back then at these verses in Romans chapter 12 that we started with just for a minute to reorient ourselves there as we move towards the end. Back to Romans chapter 12. I'm just going to read these two verses again. Hear them afresh. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. In case it needs to be said, these are not rhythms that I know how to do well. (laughs) This is not something um, that I 
yeah, live into regularly. My children will tell you. We don't, we don't Sabbath super well in our house. Um, and even as I talk about these things to you, very much I can feel myself as a grade nine student in drama class thinking, is this a good idea? <laughs> is this an okay thing? Or is this gonna go terribly wrong? But at the same time, I know with so much confidence who is asking this of me. And I see the way that Jesus modeled this for us in love. And I really believe that when he says this is the way that he has for us to live into, that we can trust that, that we can move towards that with his help, and that as we do that, it will be so good. It will be so good. It will be so good for us. It will be so good for us <laughs> as we do that together. And so whatever rises in you as we talk about these things, I pray that we will continue to bring it to God, that we will say, this is where we really are, and we don't really know what to do, but we wanna pay attention to the invitations that you are putting in front of us, and we wanna say yes to living in the way of Jesus. To close our time, I want to just read some verses to us from Isaiah 58. Totally different chunk of the Bible, but I was amazed this week about how right here in Isaiah 58 is the same kind of instruction laid out together of being given and of practicing Sabbath. And so let's hear these words again as a gentle but significant invitation from God about how he asks us to live in the sacrificial way. Starting in verse 6. This is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn, and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here, he will quickly reply. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Don't pursue your own interests on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as the Lord's holy day. Honor the Sabbath in everything you do and don't follow your own desires or talk idly. Then the Lord will be your delight. He will give you great honor and satisfy you with the inheritance that he has promised. The Lord has spoken. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand with us if you're able as we spend some more time just meditating on God's word to us.
That was a word, wasn't it? I, I think the the challenge for me is I'm good at sleeping, I'm not good at resting. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a difference between like my body's tired, I need to have a nap, versus like I need to diligently use Sabbath, diligently use this time of rest to listen to the voice of God, to walk in step with him and to actually rest in him. You know, the resistance obviously is, you know, we want to continue to do stuff, you know, like, you know, a busy life is a life and to, to rest is to kind of like say, you know, almost be lazy, but what a good reminder to us that we need this, that out of his sacrifice, we can live in his rest. That's, 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 that's really, really, really good. And hopefully that's something that you're able to take with you into even right now later on this week or something you can hold in your back pocket for later on to remind yourself just to breathe a little bit and to listen for his voice and to, and to follow, follow him that way. So we've come to the end of, of, our, of our live stream. A couple of programming reminders for you. One, we are on YouTube and we are on Discord. And so you can go from here right now and you can go on to our Discord community, or Discord server, and hang out with people. You know, the, the virtual lobby, if you will, and to be able to, you know, share stories, share prayer needs, share exciting things for the week, share recipes, share whatever it is, be able to do that. And so we encourage you to continue to do life with us that way. And in, along with that, join a home church. There's something great of being reminded that we are in this walk together, to be reminded to rest by somebody who, who knows our our rhythms, or to remind somebody to rest because we know their rhythms, and simply just to break bread and to do life with one another. And so if you have information or questions about that, rather, uh, email us, let us know, and we want to be able to, to help you find the right home church for you. And remember, peace make, Peacemaker starts next week. It's going to be fantastic. And something that I know that we're doing in our community in Newmarket is we're doing a, um, a pie bake-off contest, and people can do auctions on pies. Apparently, they want me to actually, like, get pie in the face, and, like, like, have you seen this beard and dreadlocks? Like, it's going to be impossible to get, like, lemon meringue cream pie out of this thing. But we'll figure that out. It's all for a good cause uh, to be able to be peacemakers that way. So maybe there's ways that you're able to think about ways you could be, over the course of this week, before we get started with Peacemakers officially, to 
help raise funds that way. Whatever the idea is, I'm sure it's going to be a good one. And if you're going to do pies, please be mindful of those of us with beards. It's a hard, it's hard life out there for us, but uh, we'll make it. Friends, have a great week. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace.